Hi, Chem Team. Uh, we learned in class today that an entire molecule can become polar uh, if electrons attract toward just one end of it. Uh, so, for instance, uh, this molecule, SeCf2, uh, would be a polar molecule because if you look at the electronegativities of the atoms involved, you'll see that uh, selenium, because it has a slightly lower electronegativity than carbon, uh, carbon will slightly attract its electrons closer to itself than to selenium. And fluorine, because these fluorine atoms have a higher electronegativity than carbon, will attract uh, the shared electrons with carbon closer to themselves. So in this molecule, electrons are, in general, moving downward toward the fluorine end of the molecule. We call this a dipole moment. Okay, and in a dipole moment, the end where the electrons leave becomes slightly positive, and the end where the electrons are moving toward becomes slightly negative. And in fact, these opposite charges are where the term dipole comes from. Di meaning two, and polar opposite charges. Now the opposite of a polar molecule is a nonpolar molecule, where each end of the molecule attracts electrons equally. So for instance, in carbon dioxide, uh, each oxygen atom at the ends of the molecule has an electronegativity of 3.5, whereas the carbon at the center of the atom has an electronegativity of 2.5. So as a result, these oxygens attract these shared electrons toward themselves uh, equally. And the movement of these electrons uh, cancels out. Each end is attracting the electrons equally. And that's it. At this point, you guys have a couple of practice problems. We'll see you in class tomorrow.